very grateful for all the people who have uh, put their hands up to speak, to run workshops, to share their experiences and what's happening in their classroom now. We're in a very different place than we were uh, seven years ago. Um, and it's good that we can learn from each other and build on those experiences and share our, our ideas in the, the joint and combined aim of transforming the hearts and minds and lives of the young, of the young children. What I'm going to be talking about today is computational thinking. So this is basically um, one of my passions about how computer science is actually nothing about computing whatsoever. The CAS conference we're here in Birmingham, seventh one we've, we, we've run. Um, very important day for teachers just to get together, um, share their best practice, share their ideas, hear from teachers that have been trying this um, new curriculum out in their classroom. The kind of key purpose for the conference each year is that I want the people who come to feel that um, they can then take something away that they can use in their classroom tomorrow. I guess one of the biggest points in the talk this afternoon about capturing attention for computing at school is actually to do with how to communicate with parents. The teachers are selling their subject, they're, they're making sure that the students understand what they're signing up for when they choose a particular option or to take a particular GCSE or A level. And the parents are choosing as well when they choose schools, when they encourage their children to focus on some subjects rather than others. And the senior leadership in a school are also always making decisions about where to set, spend their resources, how much curriculum type of different subjects. So what we're trying to do is help the teachers think about how to present their subject, how to actually sell the subject in a way that's clear to all of these different constituencies, all of these different stakeholder audiences. Through passive advertising of posters or through explicit talking about specific topics in assemblies or on parents' evenings. So the highlights of my session on um, computing for girls is really about focusing on the primary sector before they get into secondary and making that positive impact. So when they come to secondary school, uh, they don't get the feeling that um, computer science is just for boys or they feel like they're invading the boys' classroom. Some of the key strategies that I would see in um, ensuring that girls can take up computer science is to have a great relationship with the teacher. That's really important. Um, and, and without that, it's very, very difficult to make, to make it a, a bigger impact. Um, unplugged activities, moving away from the computer, but more importantly, some kind of contextual learning where we're dealing with real life issues, how to help society, how to help people, and talking about computing in that concept rather than about profitability or gaming. This morning I showed a classroom of teachers a lot of the new features in Codeo, how they could administer their classes, how they can use the new course content that we've created, and also a couple of brand new things that we've just released, such as Crunch, which is a really cool web-based replacement for Little Man Computer, a uh, flow charting uh, plugin that we've built and added, and also a lexicon feature, which lets students look up keywords or any part of a programming language that they might be new to. For me, the, the biggest single pedagogical um, innovation that we've seen is, is all this unplugged material. So we've had it for you know, well over a decade since Tim Bell first started doing it, but I think every time you hear a talk, some people are saying the way to distinguish ideas from technology is to teach computer science using only the ideas and not the technology at all. I think it's such a simple insight, but it's proved to be so incredibly valued. Paul Curzon's talk this morning about uh, to speaking to somebody with uh, shut-in syndrome was a classic example of how far you can go with no technology in sight. The BBC Microbit is a small programmable device that was announced by our G Director General um, in March of this year. It's going to be a gift to a million kids in the autumn of this year. Its idea is to get kids programming again, is to get them to think about how devices work. What do you write? How do you program something? How do you program a small device to do the things that you want it to do? This is the prototype. This is what we showed. Prototype, small programmable device. We see it very much as a sort of first step in, in writing programs for devices. This is coming, and that the kids, kids who are. 10, 11, 12, 13 now need to be prepared for this revolution. They will be the creators of that revolution, not the consumers of it. 
I've had a fantastic day and it's actually been my first CAS conference. I came with a team, but Paul Curzon was inspirational. My role isn't directly um, teaching, but it's working with schools and I had the feeling that a lot of it would be way above me and, and I wouldn't understand what was going on, whereas actually what I've been seeing and hearing it actually goes, it does resonate the, off, the awesomeness of computing. Uh, the highlight of the day has been meeting lots of people who've got the same passion and enthusiasm that I have for the subjects. Uh, for me, I, I wanted to specialise a little bit in robotics. I have found uh, one of the sessions is called Co Space Rescue. It ticks all the boxes for me. The talk by Peter Dickman on capturing attention for computer science. I need to really plug that in my school, um, within the student body, the parent body, the SMT, and it really got me thinking there and I'm going to follow him and try and get some more ideas. I think the most interesting for me was the uh, using the Minecraft within Raspberry Pi, because uh, that's something I'm going to be looking at using with the after school club in uh, my first year of teaching. I think Everybody should join CAS. It is the epicentre of, of the community that's making all this happen and there's a tremendous amount of support we get. Go to your local hub and engage with your colleagues who are doing this locally. Merely by talking to your friends you will generate enthusiasm ideas that is very hard to do when you're on your own. The learning curve is steep. We know that, we've always known it would be. But the teachers are coping, the support is there for them. And seeing that embodied in the discussions, in the hallways and in the meetings that are going on today, it's just spectacular. I'm just really pleased. It's going so much better than we would have guessed five or six years ago.